In both sides count, we have two senior figures from the water sector present the case for or against a particular issue. This week, the issue is around the presence of trade-offs in environmental management and decision-making. Can we really achieve net zero carbon without compromising other environmental goals? Or are we just encouraging siloed thinking and focusing only on one issue to the detriment of others like water quality and pollution? Our two guests for Both Sides Count today are Steve Bungay, Technical Director at Mott MacDonald, arguing the case against, and Austin Alexander, Vice President, Sustainability and Social Impact at Xylem, arguing the case for. As you listen to the debate, you too can join in. Click on the purple arrow to the right of your screen to open up the chat and add your own thoughts. Let's hand over to Steve and Austin. Net zero greenhouse gas emissions can be achieved without sacrificing other environmental goals. In the case of net zero emissions, the benefits of achieving net zero can also come with other benefits that help drive other goals. Net zero drives smarter management of assets in any organization. And who wouldn't want that? As example, reducing emissions related to electricity use often also drives operational savings. Improving visibility and management of emissions also improves waste and water metrics in other areas of the business. Smarter data and management of supply chains can also provide improved management in other areas of procurement and other procurement goals. And circularity design in products and services can minimize emissions but also often minimize the water, waste, and materials required to produce those products and services. Can net zero carbon be achieved without sacrificing other environmental goals? The water sector has ambitious plans to achieve net zero. However, are these plans realistic? Is net zero by 2030 achievable, let alone 2050? Does the route map, the methods of carbon accounting and reporting, mean we lose sight of climate change? and what is required to minimise the warming trajectory we are currently on. Carbon offsetting and sequestration is incredibly complicated. Are trade-offs acceptable? Is it appropriate to plant trees to continue polluting the atmosphere? And are nature-based solutions carbon sinks or carbon sources? And does carbon offsetting and storage generate the carbon benefit claimed? And how do you work out that trade-offs are acceptable? The simple answer is you don't they're not acceptable. Carbon offsetting uses disingenuous accounting to allow organisations to ignore climate change and carry on regardless. In our modern world, many environmental challenges are being exasperated by climate change caused by increased emissions in our post-industrial world. So by not doing everything in our power to address emissions and reach net zero, we're making the root cause on other environmental issues worse. The impacts of climate change are already impacting us, becoming visible in ways impacting other areas of the environment, like water availability and quality, biodiversity loss, flooding, and more. Not addressing these emissions will make other environmental challenges that organizations face worse. So you must address net zero in order to address other environmental challenges. Sometimes we need to step back and consider the bigger picture. We mustn't forget the environmental and public health benefits arising from improved sanitation. Sanitation has contributed more to public health than modern day medicine, and it continues to provide environmental benefits. Yes, the water industry needs to reduce process emissions from wastewater treatment. However, putting the benefits of sanitation to one side, sewer methane will dwarf the emissions made from wastewater and sludge treatment. Yes, the water industry needs to improve its energy efficiency. And yes, it needs to expand its use of self-generating renewables, such as solar power and anaerobic digestion. Net zero ignores nitrogen oxides, such as nitric acid and nitrogen dioxide. It ignores PM2.5 and it ignores ammonia, all of which are atmospheric pollutants that are generated by the water industry. And why is biogenic carbon ignored? Finally, it's called being able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Any business or organization in the world has to be able to balance multiple goals at the same time. It's just part of operating in a modern world. And the same goes for environmental and sustainability goals. We have to be able to reach net zero while also managing other environmental goals. Doing so just means running a business well in today's environment. Focusing on net zero, 
trade-offs hinder long-term solutions to climate change. They're again a jail card for organisations and governments alike. It's not just that net zero can't be achieved without sacrificing other environmental goals. Are the other environmental goals more important than net zero? And without a major paradigm shift, net zero is simply not achievable. So both sides are compelling. What did you think? And more importantly, what did they think? Were they genuinely arguing the case that they believe? Or were they putting forward a case for the opposition? Let's hear what they say. So what do I actually believe? I agree with everything I've already said. Trade-offs should not form part of our climate change strategy. Ignoring biogenic carbon is tantamount to negligence, and arguably using trade-offs is ecocide by the back door. However, we need to stop and think. Given the ecological improvements we have made over the last 100 to 150 years, is a single vision on net zero appropriate for the greater good? And finally, the truth, I do believe net zero greenhouse gas emissions can be achieved without sacrificing other goals, but I will admit it is difficult and it has to be done carefully. We do risk sacrificing other environmental goals if we are only tunnel visioned on greenhouse gas emissions alone. But balancing and keeping multiple goals in place is called leadership and it is doable. So there we have it. From the value of leadership and empowering your team to work together to solve environmental challenges, to the technical nuances of what really are the trade-offs, how do you measure them and what is acceptable? However, both are agreed that the goal of net zero carbon cannot be taken in isolation from other environmental goals. Thank you, Steve, and thank you, Austin. If you want to be involved in a future Both Sides Count segment, just let us know.